the Late Night Legends podcast is meant for an adult audience only. It may contain sexually oriented content. Content may not be suitable for sensitive listeners. Please be aware of your surroundings. Listener discretion is advised. and we're a podcast and we talk about spooky stuff i don't know why i can't figure this out and why i'm so awkward about it um but tonight amongst the legends you've seen before you might notice a new face and that new face will be mentioned after i introduce everybody else so we have frank over here on the ones and twos on the threes uh, and the threes and the fives don't ask what happened to four uh we have him in a lovely like opera ski kind of outfit i'm like into it she like heard white turtleneck and she said elevate yeah, <laughs> exactly i was it. like i'll put on a white turtleneck but we'll add some we'll add some stuff to it next week sunglasses everybody <laughs> <laughs> Every sunglasses. Got it. <laughs> and then we have our newest member of the team here tonight charlie hello hi welcome hello. Thank you. Would you like to give just a little blurb about what what the hell you're doing here? Why did <laughs> sure. you come into this chat? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Uh, Frank does not like how I'm doing this, and no, I'm good. Okay. I don't have. <laughs> listen, I don't have a better way to do what you're doing. I'm just here enjoying. Yeah, we're all we're all along for the ride. Uh, I'm Charlie. I uh, am in the Portland metro area here in Vancouver, Washington. I'm kind of a freelance podcast guy i guess i do three other podcasts in my spare time and then i decided what the heck let's add another one on there uh i play music i make youtube videos i stream on twitch i play video games uh i'm a big nerd i'm into sci-fi and fantasy stuff uh yeah and that's me from the from the seattle area i guess you can say that and charlie is going to be helping us late 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 millennials figure out how to do short form content video. So please be on the lookout for that. We do I have a tip. Here, I'm 33. Let's just, I'm not, maybe not. That, okay. Anyway, I, I didn't say your age. I was just saying you're helping. Okay. <laughs> uh, we do have a TikTok uh, at Late Night Legends, I believe it's under. I have to double check. We do not have videos up yet, which would be what we're working on. So thank you so much for joining our team. Charlie, we're very excited to have you. Absolutely excited uh, to be here. And as you can see, uh, Jesse and James are not on tonight. Tonight's their night off. We wish them the best. We wish them well. Jesse actually just got back from a convention where she was doing Reiki yeah. for people, which was awesome and so cool. And we love to see it. I know she posted on her Facebook that she's going to be interviewed for a book soon about how trauma and the paranormal are connected. And we Saw love that. that. So, and then um, I don't know what James is doing. James is just existing in the world, yes. and I I hope the best for him, my the, fellow New or Northeaster. He's being the best dad in the world. He's a I believe a student right now, going after education. He is doing like a new uh, theater project, and I don't know how much he wants to disclose, so I won't really talk about it. But he's got, you know, all of that plus this on his plate. So he is biting off as much as he can chew, <laughs> to say the least. So. Very proud of him and his endeavors. We wish him well also, but he will be back on hopefully next week. And we have some exciting things coming. Charlie is actually going to also be part of a different project that we're going to be. I like to think of it as like an extracurricular. So more to come on that. Stay tuned for that. And then tonight we got Joan talking about Fox sisters. Yes. Yes. Cool. Uh, before we what do if I just change it up on you the last second? I'm like, no. Stranger <laughs> Things. 
And uh, Kimberly, you got anything you want to announce or plug or anything like that? Any news? Not really. Just super excited to finally not be all by myself over here in the Pacific Northwest. So we got, but we got, we all have buddies now, and it's great. Yeah, I, I mean, on that same note, we're we are still uh, looking for another person to join our team. So if you are still interested and you, and you really, if you have some interest, reach out. We'll uh, we'll talk. Not as actively looking right now until we get Charlie up to speed. But if you do have an interest, reach out and we'll uh, we'll 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 start the conversation with you. So if you live either Chicago area, Portland area, or in the Jersey area, we're, we've got all those bases here. We got all those HQs. So we don't want you. Need not apply. If you if you live if you live in the southernmost tip of Florida, maybe that might hurt your chances. <laughs> okay, I'm done. I'm done. All right, uh, take us in, Joan. I'm gonna mute myself so I can drink some uh, Snapple here. Okay. Dropping name brands. Wow, big in this world. Snapple, please sponsor us. I don't. Do we want Nestle? Okay, we'll discuss Wait, this behind. It's, it's, it's Nestle? No, no, I don't want Nestle. I, I think Snapple is Nestle, right? Oh, I'll I'll find out, and if it is, man, Nestle can get fun. <laughs> Discovery right here. I'll find out. I'll find out who they belong to. <laughs> okay. Speaking of investigation and discovery, we are going to talk tonight about the infamous Fox Sisters, and it's a it's a doozy. So I'm gonna jump right into it. For many years, a little college in Hydesville, New York, was said to be haunted. A previous tenant was rumored to have left the house due to the paranormal activity inside. In order to be closer to their son and brother, John, Margaret, and their two youngest daughters, Margareta, known as Maggie at 14, and Kate at 11, moved into the infamous cottage. Almost immediately, the family was plagued with sleepless nights due to the girls hearing tapping throughout their bedroom. On March 31st of 1848, Mrs. Fox was at her wit's end when she once again heard the knocking coming from the girl's bedroom. She asked her husband to get the neighbor for help and to be a witness to the strange happenings. When an audience had gathered in the room, someone began or someone became brave enough to ask the entity some questions. Asking number-based questions such as, how many children do I have? How old am I? The spirit began to respond to the prompts with the appropriate amount of knocks. Found in an article called The Joints of Their Toes by author Edward White writes, quote, Slowly, it emerged that this disembodied spirit had an earthly identity. A 31-year-old peddler who had been murdered for the sum of a five hundred dollars and then buried beneath the fox's house by a previous tenant at the time nobody in the room had any idea of who the victim might have been and even though the fox's adult son david had hit upon the idea of running through the letters of the alphabet to allow the spirit to spell out the words nobody seemed to have asked the spirit to give its name in later weeks Locals began to recall that perhaps a young peddler had indeed passed through one of uh, one day some years earlier. Exactly when, they couldn't say. Others would later swear that David, digging beneath the house one summer, had discovered bones and a set of human teeth. Very quickly, fabulous tales and half-remembered anecdotes congealed into the dense tissue of a myth that made an alluring alternative and empirical truth. End quote. This is the inciting incident, which created the infamous spiritualist Fox Sisters, as well as their kickoff to the whole spiritualist movement. The spiritualism movement was inspired by several philosophies, one being the belief of the Australian uh, healer Franz Anton Mesmer, that people could become sick if the magnet fluid which controlled their body became imbalanced. Another belief came from the Swedish philosopher Emanuel Swedenborg, who said there were three heavens as well as three hells. However, before going to any of those places, once a person died, they were sent to a type of waiting room known as the, quote, the world of the spirits, unquote. Andrew Jackson Davis, who later became known as the John the Baptist of modern spiritualism, 
married the ideologies of Mesmer and Swedenborg by claiming the spirit in living claiming the spirit in the living body would be able to communicate with a spirit who had passed on. When Davis heard about the experience of the Fox sisters, he knew they could be helpful ev uh, helpful evidence to his belief, so he invited them to his home in New York City to show him under their medium capability. Sorry, to show him their medium capabilities for themselves. It should come as no surprise. The haunting and the communication with the spirits in the Hydesville house was a hoax. The tapping sounds came from Maggie's ability to crack her toes and ankles against the wood floors. Two young girls playing a prank on their parents. Gullible as their parents and neighbors may be, there was one member of the Fox family who saw through their ruse. Leah Foxfish was the eldest Fox daughter and was a single mom in Rochester, New York. She was working as a music teacher, and you can only imagine how swell her life was going for her as an abandoned working woman with children to care for in the mid-1800s. Leah saw through her sister's prank, and Maggie and Kate confessed how they were able to do it. Instead of seeing red, Leah saw dollar signs. She had her sisters move in with her and started charging people a dollar to have seances. These gatherings are what caught the attention of the priorly mentioned Jackson Davis and was the spark to the career of the Fox sisters as well as the whole spiritualism movement. Maggie and Kate traveled all, through, uh, all around the world conversing with spirits and their so-called talents were in high demand. Living in a time period where your doctor just started washing their hands as a common medical practice, uh, there was plenty of death all around and people wanted to connect with their loved ones or be reassured that there was something for them past this moral coil. The trio of sisters were a team, with many people noting how Leah often asked probing questions to those waiting for the seance or would explain why her sisters were not able to contact spirits at certain times. Funny how some of those times were when there happened to be carpeting on the floor or <laughs> when the girls had to expose their feet to skeptics. I feel many times when the Fox sisters are discussed, they are villainized as scam artists who preyed on people who were desperate to contact their loved ones. There's no denying they were fraudulent. However, when really looking into the story, you get the feeling that not only was the audience exploited, but so were the Fox sisters, Maggie and Kate. Remember, they were only 14 and 11 when Leah started having them do their act. There, are se there were several occasions where the girls were taken into a private room after performing a seance and were asked to strip in front of an older woman to prove that it was not a hoax. Maggie, in particular, had it rough. Religious skeptics uh, infiltrated her... Oh, sorry. Religious skeptics, infuriated by her affiliation with spiritualism, attempted to kidnap her in Troy, New York. One would hope that with all this fame, Maggie would be granted more opportunities, despite being a girl from a poor family. The sisters were able to meet many celebrities of the time, like P.T. Barnum, of of Serpicus fame, uh, poet William Cullen Bryant, and the newspaper editor Horace Greeley. Greeley was particularly fond of the sisters, especially after the loss of his own son. From the Haunted Museum's article, quote, the Fox sisters rise and fall of the spiritualism's founders, sorry, here's the quote, quote, Greeley even offered to pay for the girl's education, and while Leah accepted his offer for Kate, she refused to allow Maggie, the more talented of the two mediums, to leave what had become the family business, unquote. Oh. Yeah. If it wasn't bad enough, Maggie was denied an education. It's also heartbreaking to know she was indirectly mocked for it as well. From the same Haunted Museums article, quote, When one sitter noted that Benjamin Franklin's spirit seemed to be surprisingly lacking a good grammar... Maggie stomped away from the seance table with only the reply of, you know I never understood grammar, unquote. <laughs> 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 
<laughs> Buckle up, kids. It doesn't get better. So <laughs> I'm up all right. At the age of 17, Maggie met the 30-year-old Arctic explorer Alicia, or sorry, Elisha Kent Kane. Kane was a skeptic of Maggie and her sister, but even after spending a month observing them, he immediately said he could not figure out how they were doing it. Maggie and Kane fell into a type of love where Kane's affections was at times eclipsed by his embarrassment of Maggie's career and upbringing. She's Aww. 17. Uh, Maggie agreed to leave the spiritualist space and get an education in order to potentially one day be Kane's bride. However, Kane's aristocratic family would never accept her. Considering her too low class to even be uh, to ever be a proper marriage prospect for their son, the two were never legally married, but did exchange vows and a promise rings with Cain pledging that upon his return from his upcoming exploration, they would be wed. Sadly, Cain never returned to Maggie. He fell ill in Cuba and died at the age of thirty-six. Oh, okay. Uh, Maggie could not find closure for the loss of her love due to Kane's parents forbidding her from attending his funeral. Uh, Maggie was entitled to none of his worldly belongings due to their lack of legal marriage and his parents refusing to acknowledge their vows they took. Maybe to prove to his family or maybe to prove to herself the love that they shared was real. Maggie published a collection of letters between her and her and late Kane titled The Love Life of Dr. Kane. Though this was not enough to save her from falling into the depths of despair, and she began to drink to the point of destruction. Oh shit. Amongst the desperation and despair, Maggie also felt resentment. Her partner and sister, Kate, fared a bit better than her. She met her husband overseas and had some children together. However, after her husband passed away, Kate followed Maggie into becoming an alcoholic. Her addiction became so severe, she had her children taken away. The only sister who seemed to escape the fate was Leah, who married rich, uh, who married a rich businessman and was able to live comfortably on his salary, as well as the money she had profited from Maggie and Kate. Wow. Maggie's resentment came to a head in 1888 when she gave a public demonstration of how her and her sisters committed the hoax. Kate was in the crowd and said nothing to agree or disagree with Maggie. Oh, all right. As mentioned before, the two sisters were leading very hard lives, and a year after her confession, Maggie recanted and attempted to practice mediumship again. Many believe that this was in order to generate some form of income, but the damage was done. In July of 1892, Kate was found dead by her sons. Uh, it was assumed that she drank herself to death. Maggie ended up passing away less than a year later in March of 1893. Both sisters ended up dying, homeless, and penniless. That's 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 the roller coaster ride of the century, right there. Yeah. Horrible. So, thoughts, prayers, beliefs, whatever you want to throw at me. <laughs> like, comment, like, comment, and subscribe. Everything. <laughs> Is a prayer. <laughs> I don't the, I don't know. Their older sister was just like living married to somebody really rich and the money she profited off of and didn't do anything to jump in and help. No. No, she didn't. Wow. Uh oh, actually she... when Kate's kids got taken away, uh Maggie was the one who tried really hard to fight to get custody of the children. Uh, but could not, and thankfully they did secure custody of, like, a couple of family members over in England. Gosh. What were you saying, Charlie? <laughs> oh, I was saying, uh, back to Elisha Kane real quick. I mean, he yeah. was a Navy surgeon. He was a medical person, and you're right. I mean, this was the the latter half of the 1800s. It's not like he was incredibly, but, I mean, the, the fact that nobody could really figure this out, and, like, there was people. One guy, I guess, held onto her foot and and felt felt something moving when the knocks were coming out. But mm. that, that was like kind of it. And um, it it just kind of blows my mind that this guy was clearly like a smart guy, uh, explorer, been to the Arctic, been you know, been all over the world. Couldn't figure out. <laughs> He's just like, ah, maybe it's ghosts. I don't know. Oh, I I can't say it's not ghosts. 
maybe he was distracted in the most disgusting way that you could be. <laughs> that, that's definitely a possibility. I'm gonna, I'm gonna make a T-shirt that says, "I can't say it's not ghosts." Can't it's say it's not ghosts. It's, can't say it's not ghosts. All right, that I can't believe it's not butter. <laughs> <laughs> But this, like, and I didn't write about this, but this also comes in. And the reason I want to talk about this is there's a very recent controversy in the paranormal hunting, like, sphere and universe with um, a couple, and I can't think of their name. That's really, really bad. But they uh, claim uh, it's like the daughter of one of the guys who was on Ghost Hunters, not Ghost mm-hmm. Adventures, Ghost Hunters, oh, right. um, who, like, her name's Satori because it's like, I forget, it means something in Japanese, but they're, I, she doesn't look Japanese to me. But, like, Justin, my husband's half Japanese and speaks it. You can like, it. That means that. Um, but, like, her and her fiancé, I think they're fianced, affianced. They're fianced. Um, betrothed. They're betrothed. Betro- they're betrothed. They're affianced. Uh, we're holding hands. And there's a question of if they're doing the same thing because they'll go through the alphabet and, like, do knocks and spell. Oh. And but there's like a question of if they're legitimately doing it or if they're doing something like the Fox sisters did. And it like brought up a great controversy in the ghost hunting community because they had to come out and say, like, no, we're totally real. And like the connection got stronger once we met each other and like we're in love and stuff like that. So that's what inspired this. <laughs> Joan Joan. Joan, why did you pick this topic? I'm just curious what drew you to the to the Fox sisters as a, a topic. Well, as I said, I like controversy in the I like gossip. Essentially, there was gossip and it uh, talked about the Fox sisters. And I realized I don't know a lot besides the fact that they were like part of the spiritualism movement and uh, were hoax like hoaxes and came out and said, like, oh, no, we faked it. And so I was like interested in that. And as I said, like, Joan is here for the smoke. I'm no, I'm here for the plot, honey, not for the smoke. <laughs> what? I was getting that she's here, here for the, the ghosts. Here for the ghost. Uh, what smoke? What are you talking about? Justin, one thing that we can be sure of Joan can't say that it's not ghosts. I can't say that it's not ghosts. <laughs> for the smoke? I don't know what he means by that. Okay. Charlie, so you know Justin's my husband. Oh, okay. <laughs> That's why Who I said, honey. random person just threatening you in the chat? What's <laughs> happening? Threatening me. We catch these uh, pants. Yeah, no, it's just normal domestic threats. Okay, okay, okay good. Yeah, yeah, it's cool. <laughs> domestic. <laughs> like I had one of those today. She's never not said it's not smoke. <laughs> what are you talking about with smoke? <laughs> what are you talking about? I get it. I What's even it. worse is I know he can hear me screaming because he's just on the other <laughs> side of the wall. Do you think he's on the other side of the wall like, tee hee hee? She's not <laughs> off the smoke. He's probably not tee hee heeing. I don't think he's ever tee hee heed. Oh, I meant I'm... ghost. Oh, thank you, honey. Okay, thank you. Oh, oh, spell check. Auto cucumber. Got it. It's... No, he's typing on a, cube... a keyboard. I'm really confused. What's up? <laughs> oh, God, really? You... Uh, hun, do you smell toast? <laughs> Can you, you tell me do you smell toast? Joan, let me What's ask up? you based okay. on your topic and, and, and your interest here with this one. If there are any content creators currently in any sort of medium, who do you think might be a fraud today talking about ghosts? Oh, are we are we talking about content creators or people are, who have like Anyone Do you want in- me to get dirty? Because I can go dirty. Please, get, get dirty. I feel like we're all here for that. I mean, Ghost Adventures is all fake, and he's a douche. He's a oh, douche to oh, the ghost. Oh, Charlie, I hope you make a short out of that. <laughs> sure. Uh, yeah. he's, no, he's mean to the ghost, and it really pisses me off. We used to call it, like, when because I grew up on Ghost Adventures. We, right, right. My friend and I, we would go home every Friday, and we would watch Ghost Adventures in, like, high school. Like, we grew up on Zach not Baggins. I don't know what he actually calls himself. But, like, he, like, yells at the ghost and says mean things, and then a little noise happens, and he's like, eh. And I'm like, shut up. <laughs> don't be mean. Like, that's not necessary. Don't be like, come at me, ghost. Come at me, ghost. 
but, but Joan, you you understand you kind of sign up for that a little bit. These reality go shows, like they're meant to be a little little corny. Like I no, no, because there was a Ghost Adventures episode, I think it's second season, where they didn't find anything relevant. So he like has a 20 minute interaction with a rattlesnake and he's messing with a rattlesnake. And I'm like, stop bullying the rattlesnakes. I thought I was getting paid bullying for the ghost and bullying a ghost the of a rattlesnake or a, a living one? A living one. And then oh, like okay. in like so another like episode, he like ghost. drops up an ax and sits under it. And he's like, if there's a ghost, hit me with the ax. And I'm like, what are you doing? <laughs> Guys, I, I never thought about this. Do animals have ghosts? Could there be a rattlesnake There's ghost? some. There's some that say they can. I hope that rattlesnake hunts. Also, he's, I I could go on and on. What he calls a Dybbuk box is not a Dybbuk box, and it's very annoying. What, did he, what does he call it? Like, he's just like, it's a haunted, like, wine chest. It's a Dybbuk box, and there's a mean ghost in it that goes after people. And that's not what it, a Dybbuk is literally uh, in Jewish folklore. Like, something that attaches to a human. It can't attach to an object, and they can't make Post Malone crash his car. <laughs> Wait, where did Post Malone come into this? Post Malone got attacked by the pick. Get off! This is, this is going off the real way. Malone, <laughs> Post Malone, if you're listening to this, Post Malone, we need... We Post need Malone, to... I love you. You're great. You know what? I, be, I bet it wasn't a, I wasn't it wasn't a Dybbuk that made him crash his car. It was the Bud Light Hard Seltzer. That was <laughs> that's probably what did it. It was attacked by the Bud Light Hard Seltzer Hard Seltzer ghost. And then, <laughs> anyway. Keep up, Frank G's. Thank thank you, honey. My My husband knows because I've I've yelled this many a time with the yeah, what is he doing? Yeah. That's not how it works. <laughs> no, I have like I have a lot of issues with a lot of like goat. Not, I'm not gonna say like Come on, small here. niche ghost hunting, but like big, big brand, big, here big the dirty box name brand. It. Put it huh? out. Put the dirty out. Put the dirty laundry out to dry. We're here for it. Who oh. else? Who else do you take issue with? Come on, let's give the people. Uh, fuck the Conjuring people. I forget why. Can't oh the Warners. Warners are awful. They're not nice. They're not Jones, nice people. That's Jones' anger about Zach Baggins borders on the paranormal. <laughs> <laughs> Justin, do you want a mic? I have an extra mic. You want to just come in here? <laughs> I feel like that could go on a t-shirt too. I want that on a t-shirt as well. You could. Well, it feels like from what you were saying, it feels like the you said Ghost Adventures. That was the ones you had yeah, the Adventures with Zach. It feels like it feels like they're ones. going off of Ghost the movie rules, right? With Patrick Swayze, where he, like you have to have an emotion to be able to interact with the real world. So he's just trying to get them mad so they do something. Maybe I don't know. Oh, and like, 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 there's di there off. are different beliefs in ghost hunting. Like I know, like in China, they believe you should insult the ghost to keep the ghost away from you because mm. no one wants to hang out with someone who's mean to them. Zach. Be and, nice and to Aaron. That's all that's I'm like saying. Also, he's had a lot, a lot going on with like name dropping other people and not letting them get shows. Um, like you... other people who used to be on his team who oh. try to do other shows. What? Can you give yeah. us all of that? I want to hear about that, T. I will. I will send you the videos. I because I'm such I'm such okay. shit with names. I have to like write them down. But like the guy who did them, like left. Uh, Ghost Adventures and did like the 72 hour lockdown show with that girl. Oh, yeah. Like they tried doing that show and they were on Travel Channel and then apparently Zach said something and now that show's not there because it was a competing show with him. No, oh, I will say this. Wow. Prior to doing this podcast, I really did not think that there was any substance behind people saying that the community can be toxic, the paranormal community. But there's so much fucking toxicity amongst some of these super political relationships that people have with each other. So much. <laughs> also, everything we're saying is alleged, by the way. Alleged. Yeah. Allegedly. I these are based on my opinions and not not facts I have looked up. I do not have sources. They're all my opinion. Uh none of it could be true because it's all alleged. I always need to kick on the show because I like watching the show just for like entertainment purposes but it always gets me when it's like really slow and they're not really getting anything and all of a sudden he'll just turn to somebody on his crew and he's like super mad and he's like 
walk away or I'm going to punch you. And he just gets so upset. And then he walks away and he's like, I'm fine. I just, I had something come over me. <laughs> I love it. I love that type of trash. Delicious trash. As long so as you, understand. you guys do in the middle of each episode, you just you start yelling at each other and you're like, oh, we were just, we were so possessed. Something came over me. <laughs> My awkward. therapist says that's not an excuse. That's all I'm oh. saying. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there is a new ghost hunting show coming out that I'm very excited for that is all LGBTQ people uh, yes. ghost hunting. And they've already like put a, t a thing out on TikTok where like a ghost like said the F slur against um, <laughs> gay people. And they're like, we're done. We're done talking to this ghost. And I was like, get it. Make a boundary with the supernatural. You deserve a boundary. They can't just say hateful shit. They can't. I can't believe the ghost did that. I mean, what do they I have to lose, either. right? Like, what do they have to lose? <laughs> ghost is from a, it's from another time. It doesn't, uh, you know, it's just not up on the, on the lingo. No, it's a rude ghost and it should learn. That ghost is going to get canceled, but it's already. Good. Ghost, ghost canceling that'd be a great show i'd watch hashtag that. all ghost i'm canceling all ghost hashtag canceled i mean if you find a ghost in america like pre-civil war you can just, just kind of assume that it's probably oh, a yeah. shitty ghost person like i would agree with that okay taking down notes ghosts can be like this and there can be a ghost rattlesnake i'm learning new things tonight but, okay, but Zach Baggins wasn't going after a ghost rattlesnake. He was going after a live one and just pestering an animal. Just pestering. And that's, I don't want you to think he's like, there's a ghost rattlesnake here. That's uh, one, unadvisable, and two, just impolite. Like, why really would you is. be rude to an animal? Like, it, it, does, it, it doesn't want you there. Like, think by it out. Ghost fish? Like, there's a lot of fish out there. Do you think there are ghost fish swimming around? Hear me out. Loch Ness Monster. Ghost well, fish. not really a fish. Even, is Nessie actually a fish? I thought Nessie was like a dinosaur type deal. Maybe it's a ghost dinosaur. A go a ghost is dinosaurs aren't fish? <laughs> Why aren't there any dinosaur ghosts, guys? Hold on. We're getting somewhere tonight. Where are the dinosaur ghosts? Where are everywhere. they? Where are they? They are everywhere. Uh, they possess birds. And that's why birds uh, poop on you. Yeah, only only birds can communicate. That makes sense. I thought Ness. Okay, it's from Justin. I thought Nessie was the people that makes. <laughs> Do you want a microphone, hon? Justin. Okay, Joan. We're gonna let you go. It's been real. We gotta get Justin in here. Come on. <laughs> Replaced. Give come the people. I don't think he will. I don't, I don't think he's gonna come. He's a little. He's a little shy. He he's, like. He's a keyboard warrior for sure, though. But he's he's a little shy. He's got those mechanical keys too. He's, he's our strongest wire in the chat. I'll leave it Probably a Cherry MX blue guy. That's what I'm guessing. Uh, no, he grew up in Japan. He likes weird stuff. Uh, wh what? 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 Is the, what do those two things have to do with each other? Oh, they're talking about soda flavor. I heard cherry. I'm sorry. I'm talking about keyboard switches. He looks like a. Oh, oh I don't know what he does. He 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 built. My computer and his. Oh, computer. he does and MX Brown. Oh, that's, see, that's the correct that's answer. The yeah. Guy. Yes. Ooh, he, he does, does. MX Browns. That's Brown. so nice. He likes the tactility. I uh, like Browns. I, 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 the, Browns, I think, are the most popular. See, I got MX Blues at work because I like to annoy the shit out of people <laughs> from me going to the office. Just the, okay. the clickiest. Okay, we're done okay. talking boards. Um, but yeah, anyway, um, another reason I was really into this topic is, um, I am the type of believer that likes to believe when there's no evidence apparent. Cause like, as I said before, I'm in it for the plot. Like believing in ghosts is fun. Believing is about, right? <laughs> it's so fun. Uh, but I also like to be proven wrong. Cause I, my philosophy on like everything paranormal is that like, if not real, we still make it real because we use human emotion to come up with it. So like, what is, what is making us feel that emotion? You typically fear. It's like, what's driving that emotion. And so like talking about people who are scam artists are, or have like proven that things are hoax. Why, why are they doing that? Uh, and how do they 
take people and like make them agree with them and things like that so like as i said they lived in a time period where there was a lot of death and like who doesn't want to feel like a little bit better that maybe i don't just rot in the ground maybe something else maybe my magnet fluid blood thing <laughs> yeah, like, what is, evens uh, out and yeah, i go to heaven this magnet blood well can you can you touch on that a little bit can you tell us about the magnet blood uh no <laughs> I, don't, I briefly read about it and went wow i think like it's I don't, I don't know like what is it when the kimberly if you had to take a guess kimberly what magnet blood is can you tell us what you think magnet blood might be i have to imagine it's got to be something similar to like the black bile yellow bile like yeah crap. like I, the, the what's humors. the word for that the humors <laughs> humors yes it's, it has to be like a humors yeah yeah, they believe some funny stuff. Like when they first um, came out with cars, doctors believed that women uh, couldn't ride in cars because they go so fast their uteruses would fly out. So yeah. even early trains, they were afraid early trains going 25 miles an hour would shake things loose, as it were. <laughs> the whole Tuskegee Airmen was a experiment because they thought black people had a part in their brain that would explode if it got to a certain height. Yeah, it's it's generally all, all misogyny and racism all the way down. But all the way down. All the way down. So. Yeah. And that's also why I love folklore because we ruined it. We have ruined it so many times, and we have to talk about it because it's fun. <laughs> so true. I I'm, I I'm very interested in the Fox Sisters uh, as it pertains to spiritualism. Have, have you guys covered spiritual? I've I, mean, I haven't seen that episode. Fine. I'm I'm sure you haven't watched our entire catalog, but oh, not all of it, unfortunately. <laughs> yeah. Uh, despite having done the show for I think a little bit more than a year, a couple of years now, I don't think we've had a show dedicated to strict spirituality. That's well, well spirituality uh, or spiritualism. The oh. spiritualism movement is what I was really yeah, talking. We, about. we haven't covered that exclusively yet so maybe it could be a future topic actually. it's very interesting I, i'll just want to go over a few because i i know a little bit about that um please my own stuff but uh especially like so like you said these guys were really like the fox sisters were very pioneering in that industry kind of some of the first people to do it for money in front of people but you're right once uh, especially with the uh spanish flu and then world war one uh, there's so much death and destruction that spiritualism really popped off. And this is around the time of Houdini getting super popular as well. And even Arthur Conan Doyle, who wrote Sherlock Holmes, who is very cold, lo lo uh, logical machine kind of guy, his son died and he got very into spiritualism. Uh, and obviously this is post uh, the Fox sisters, but he really, really got, got into it later in life, which is kind of strange to think about, but yeah. Go and to a like, lot of seance, things like that. The history of seances in America is so interesting. Like the Fox Sisters is the is the start, right? But it's not the peak. The peak is like post Civil War when uh, Mary Todd Lincoln, what or I guess like mm -hmm. Civil War, post Civil War, Mary Todd Lincoln was having seances done in her home to try to connect with her children. And then you also get all these other things such as like ghost photography coming up. And that's where you get the, like, the cheesecloth uh, scandal, but also like the painting people in the backgrounds of these pictures to try to believe in just the that's so when much people death. That, uh, that's when they pr first started taking like weird photos of like ectoplasm and all that kind of stuff. Yes. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So ectoplasm was cheesecloth. That was the weird cheesecloth thing. I forgot the name. Yeah. I, I forget that maybe you, you know, there was a, uh, she was very popular in seances, but she would produce just lots and lots of the ectoplasm. Mm -hmm. and like and people would inspect her and so she was like throwing it up or something but just like voluminous amounts of the cheesecloth coming out of everywhere so uh yeah it was it's a weird time like but as i said it's so interesting too that the you can say that some of these people did it for money reasons because you know who doesn't in this capitalistic society <laughs> Uh, but, like, why do people believe it? And why do people want to believe it so badly? And, like, some of these things seem like, no, like, no, duh. Like, why wouldn't you, like, realize it? And even with, I feel sometimes when we get a look at history, one, we're told, like, yeah, people in the past, idiots, ate this up. Everyone was like, oh, my God, can't believe it. Well, Fox still sisters had tons of skeptics. Tons of people who were like, they're doing weird stuff with their feet. 
And other people were like, no, 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 it's, it's chill. Mostly men who lost children were like, no, shut up. It's fine. Don't worry about it. Well, huh? I think it kind of ties into a to the topic that Frank did where people are wanting or interested in preserving themselves in artificial intelligence so that they never die. And I think people are just... Re or you know when you do die you just like kind of snap into another dimension or something like that i think people are just fascinated with um what happens after we die and they just want to believe that it's not nothing and they just cling on to whatever they can yeah people really i think once you start becoming a little bit more of a middle-aged to an older individual, a lot of people start worrying about their legacy. And that's when people's minds start producing these thoughts of like, what happens when you die? Cause it's kind of, it's, it's actually kind of scary to think about death sometimes and like, what the fuck is going to happen? Is it like nothing, which is scary? Or is it like something we totally don't even understand, which is also scary. And uh, yeah, I mean, that's such a big rabbit hole that we touched on with that show. Um, a lot of people, like I, I mentioned, they think this thing that we call, or they call it ego, but that's sort of the barrier and boundary that are we have in our mental state. And this weird breaking of the ego is you being able to to leave. And there's all these people who like very seriously will talk about like, hey, ego death, it means that you've transcended that barrier. And the real secret that people are keeping is that you were, were more than, than this physical body that we have. We're this spirit and soul. And, you know, there's so, so much behind it. So... Yeah, I, I honestly, like, I want to believe. I really do. And, well, I'll, I'll also say this, and it kind of parallels this. There's, not, like, a lot of people that I know are completely fake with their paranormal content today, but I still like watching it, right? So I feel like they probably, in that time, were experiencing some of that, too, where people would come by, see them, pay them money, knowing, yeah, it's probably fake, but I like to have a good time. You know what I mean? I, yeah. I love a good fake. There's a lot of, um, you'll see clips specifically from, like, Japan of, like, people ghost hunting, and they're probably fake because for some reason they're very different than everyone else's but they're good they get you like i'm like oh my god that is a little girl staring at me and i'm so scared of that and like i don't know i applaud a good fake if i can't tell it's a fake i'll enjoy it if it's a little bit too easily re recreated i'm like eh, give me something good some the, that's some what the, i said it's the feeling it's the fear like, some of the fake horror uh people in japan or are, are, take it really far like i don't remember what his name was there was a movie director out there who was like making gore movies and he would make fake people out of materials that look so real they fucking arrested him because they thought he was really filming like surgery like in his horror movie like somebody was getting like cut open and stuff and it was so real looking they fucking yeah. picked the guy up and i was like wow that's awesome like you know what's fake but damn that's that's incredible i mean like there's always the, there was yeah there's always that interesting topic of media that created mayhem so uh, talking about something that was faked uh, on many different levels, interestingly enough, is the War of the Worlds um, oh, yeah, radio yeah. broadcast, oh, yeah. which actually wasn't that big of a deal. Um, and then, uh, but to your point, Frank, like Hannibal Holocaust was a movie that like had went on trial because and they had to prove that it wasn't a documentary. Um, and then the. Um, uh, the reason that uh, the Blair Witch did so well was the marketing and how real it was and how people couldn't tell. And that's, I believe, is like one of the in reasons that like we all yeah. started getting interested in ARGs is the I idea that like you can't that. figure out what's real and what's not real. Blend yeah. a little bit of reality with a little bit of fake and people love that shit. I, that's why I love ARGs. Mm -hmm. I don't, I even like knowing that I wasn't going to have an entire show topic just to dedicate to an ARG because there's so many of them or, or more. I wrote a nice little blog about ARGs. If you want to check it out at late night legends, that boo, you wanna, Ooh, if, you know what ARGs are, if you don't know what ARGs are or how they work, check out a blog that I wrote personally. I'm a, I'm a bad writer, uh, but if I keep your, it really it. I think, I think you might like it. That's all I'm saying. I think you might like it. So, uh, yeah, no, I, I really feel that like as a society past, present and probably future, we love fake shit and we love subscribing to it. I love some trash paranormal TV. Actually. I love it. Paranormal state is what I grew up on. And okay. I, I knew half of that shit was fake and it's just sort of 
starts to become pretty laughable when you like really think about like the format of the show. Like I know like in that particular show, Ryan Buell would start every show of like a weird audio clip of him talking into a recorder and it's like a weird recorder voice. And it sounds like he's making a, a journal, but it's like, who's the journal actually for nobody does like a little tape recorder. Like I know it sounds cool, but like, it's not necessary. Like write down your findings. Oh, look at earth has joined us again. <laughs> I'm having some issues. Hold on. No, it's okay. But, uh, hey, oh, I was going to say, for some, like you mentioning that just reminded me, like, this is a weird pet peeve that I have. I hate found footage where you have to go, why would you be holding a camera right now? Oh, yeah. yeah. A lot of paranormal activity. I, I was like, why would you hold a camera? Like, they're answering the doors. And I'm like, well, if my family member came to me with a camera in my face as I answer the door, I'd be like, what is happening? What's going on? Or like, I know even like Kane Pixels is guilty of it, but like in his um, ARG stuff, like backrooms and everything, I like film an interaction with a monster or whatever. Oh yeah, it's scary, but like you're running away from the monster. Why do you keep like turning around with the camera? Like, bro, save your life. <laughs> like you don't have to turn around. My uh, uh, husband's favorite thing every time we see a ghost thing and someone runs away, he's like, "No, go and kick it." go back and kick it and like he's convinced <laughs> that if he saw a ghost he would try to kick it and i'm like please don't do that to the ghost that's not oh, nice, I be agree. nice. No. i'm on team justin here fuck that ghost kick him kick him in the leg take out the legs unless they're floating <laughs> and then <laughs> i'm gonna do <laughs> justin says why won't anyone pull a gun on a ghost <laughs> And I think what we're afraid of is I think the ghost will take the gun and then use it on you. I think that's the real concern here. No one ever talks about a ghost with a gun. That's what we're not talking about. We need to be afraid of that. That is, you know what? That is the, that's the fear that we all, that's the topic that America's too afraid to talk about. People are afraid about. It's not ghost guns, but a ghost with Dude, a gun. People are afraid about like a ghost jumping out, and like grabbing you in the dark. Nah, you got to be afraid of a ghost with a shotgun. Trust, <laughs> trust me, bro. <laughs> oh, this is all allegedly, by the way. Still allegedly. <laughs> Still allegedly. Where did that ghost get a hand grenade? I don't know. <laughs> Casper, what are you doing? Ghost and a hand grenade sounds like a really cool indie band. I would listen to them. Totally. <laughs> Where did Casper get a trident? <laughs> Where did Casper get a trident? <laughs> So if a ghost has a ghost gun does that mean the gun has to die too or how does that work Harry, i don't know i don't know how that works wow who, who ghost first <laughs> i oh, love man. i love this i could i feel like this was great uh justin says <laughs> what are you gonna do step ghost oh no, what are you doing step what are you ghost? doing step ghost what are you doing step ghost Oh my god. I'm stuck oh. in the Dybbuk box. <laughs> if you got that reference, give us a thumbs up on the YouTube if you know what Step Ghost is doing. I'm ashamed, I'm sorry. <laughs> Charlie. I'm ashamed. I'm also very No, I'm I'm impressed. I'm scared and I'm impressed. And it's it's like watching ghost shows for me. <laughs> I, think, I think that's why you marry Justin. He's clearly romantic where he scares and impresses you at the same time. I think it's I think it's romantic. romance is the word. I think it, I think it's I don't know if it's the one I would use to describe this, but I yes, it is a word. If he was not already taken, to be honest with you, after after being impressive, yes. Okay, so here's the thing about my husband. He has a lot of straight men who have crushes on him. Ah. Like, you are not the first, nor will you be the last, and it's a weird phenomenon. Uh, so for we have um. Our birthdays are a week apart from each other, so we always do a group birthday. So this year we did a death to our 30s, and we had uh, people uh, do a eulogy for us. And if you didn't want to do a eulogy, you could do a cremation and roast us instead. <laughs> and, like, all of them were like, Joan, she does this weird stuff. Justin, though, he's a great guy. I love him. Like, <laughs> <laughs> just... And it was all his guy friends being like, I just really love him and the time we've spent together. Charlie, you know, I know you're just meeting the team more or less, but Joan and Justin can be weird people. Like we found out that like, if you're single and you want to join the friend group, they won't let you in. If you're single, you got to no. be nerd. But if you're grandfathered into the program, you're totally good. You're fine. 
Tell me I'm wrong. Tell me I I'm wrong. I said I don't want to make any more single friends because I don't want to deal with them trying to date. Yes. Okay. <laughs> it's so much easier when you have couple friends. <laughs> Everyone's entertained at the table. You don't have to only entertain one friend. I'm pretty good at, about entertaining myself or keeping myself entertained, but uh, that's called ADHD. I find a rattlesnake ghost with a gun. <laughs> and... Oh my god, the trifecta. <laughs> I don't know what we're doing. You took it in this direction. I don't know what I did. I was talking about oppressed young ladies in the mid-1800s and how everyone was exploited, and you're like... Who do you hate, Joan? Who a content creator yeah. do you want to start paranormal beef with? <laughs> I think Justin had a good point. Why don't we shoot the ghosts with a gun? Why? Can we do but it? Again, oh. My point being, what do they have to lose? You gonna kill them? Like, what are you gonna do? Yeah, they're gonna oh. double die. Dude, <laughs> I shoot double. the ghost with a bazooka, okay? There has to be an anime about this. Justin, what's the anime? Where Yu Yu you shoot a ghost with a gun and they double die. <laughs> I think that's Yu Yu Hakusho. I think I'm right about that. But It uh, might be. Because he's got the spirit gun. You can shoot out his finger. It and also he's... sounds like Bleach. Uh... Well, yeah, Bleach kind of, yeah. Oh my <laughs> god. I was So I decided to take another watch of the newer Ghostbusters movie. Okay. Newest one that was yeah. like a good one, right? It was, yeah, it was good. What really annoyed me was... The way they destroyed the Marshmallow Man in the first uh, the Afterlife movie, um, the way they destroyed the Marshmallow Man in the first is total platonic reversal or protonic, where they got the the blasters and they combine them across and, the beams. Yeah, right. The, when the beams cross, it fires back at them and they just jump out of the way and it kills the Marshmallow Man. But in the new movie, they just retcon that and now when they combine the guns they kill whatever's in front of it, which doesn't make any sense to the new movie. And I was so mad about it. Yeah, Fuck. it just makes a mega laser. There are mega beams. It just makes a mega beam. And I'm like, that's not how that even was supposed to work. What are we doing here? So, so hot take here. Well, not a hot take, more of a question. Would Ghostbusters be better if there was a magical girl transformation in it? A, a magical girl transformation? Yeah, d Frank. For I sure. know you had, didn't watch anything in the 2007s on the internet, but don't tell me you don't know what a magical girl transformation is. Oh, what that is? <laughs> Sailor Moon? I, I've never, I'm not an anime guy. In fact, I made it a point not to watch anime because I had a really pretentious college professor who was like, anime is all lazy drawing and look at these characters. They got no features. You either learn to draw the American way or you get the fuck out of my class. Mr. Schwartz, 2006. I hope he's double dead. Wait, I like how he like he was so pretentious and mean to anime, so I also didn't watch anime. He taught me that, He taught me he taught me how to resent anime and I bought into it. I'm honest with you. Oh I don't no longer feel that way, but for many years I resented the animation style and I was anti anime. So, for like so a, a magical girl transformation is when you have a plain looking girl who then has like a musical sequence and flashing lights and her outfit changes into her superhero persona. I want to do that. Can I do that? I mean, with yes. This could also, tie, this could also tie, tie into mech, mecha anime where like the Gundams transform or the, you know, Voltron assembles, that kind of thing. Do you, you know, know where the name Gundam comes from? I don't. No. Please tell me. It's, it's two words put together. Gun and dumb? No, gun and freedom. Oh. Freedom. <laughs> I mean, that that's that's fits the theme of the show really well. It really does. Is there anything more American than Freedom Gun? Because I I can't think of anything that's more American. It's not an American show. But 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 okay. In um uh, in Gundam Double O, one of the the subplots is that like so the the Gundams appear and the the Americans are trying to make a uh, mobile suit that's like a Gundam, but they don't have that technology. But they they uh this one guy. Uh, uh, I forget his name, but this one character, he's just like the super American guy. And he's like obsessed with making his own version of a Gundam. And he's, oh, what is that thing? I need that. It's, it's like, and he's like, uh, anyway. For those of you out there, a, a Gundam is a, a robot that is manned by a man and 
has yeah. guns and also it usually has to be specifically manned by a man they're very sexist in the first uh version of gundam <laughs> yeah in the first yeah the first few definitely <laughs> yeah, uh, i only watch uh english dubs because i'm dyslexic and can't read fast uh so we watched the dubbed version and just her going i'm a row i'm a row every time kills me and then the guy who does the english dub for inuyasha is also in the show so whenever he speaks, my husband and I just go, Inuyasha, Kagome! And that's all the anime I will talk about for the rest of the night. I am very sorry. <laughs> I, all of that flew right over my head, and I get the feeling over Kimberly's too. <laughs> but, okay. but, but, but the last one I will mention, because uh, it's kind of on the topic, Spirited Away, <gasps> video Ghibli movie. It's a oh. movie about a girl who goes to a hotel for spirits and ghosts. Listen, guys. My my fiance got me involved with Ghibli. I watched Grave of the Fireflies, and now I will never watch. Where did you watch? Tell me later where you watched it. We couldn't find it when I was looking. We got it on the high seas. Internet. It should. I thought they had all the Ghibli on on Max, HBO. Oh well, I don't have Max. Oh. We'll have a we'll have a talk during our our That's meet. Fine. But yeah, speaking of which, I have stuff for your fiance. What? that i haven't been able to send and i'm just gonna send i'm just gonna bring it is it on the registry of, <laughs> kind of stuff is it a big fruit basket because yes said, it is specifically a fruit basket it's a fruit <laughs> for the basket you already it's, have yeah, it's fruit for the basket <laughs> actual fruit or is it gonna be like that fake plastic fruit it looks real good a it's hybrid a, it's dusty you won't know you won't know what's the bad part <laughs> this has been great guys this has been so much fun. Uh, Thank you for coming to our haunted anime talk. Charlie, <laughs> did you like uh, episode number one? <laughs> I, I mean, it's I mean, it's got as about as structured as any podcast I've been on to date. Had a great great time. Good talking with you guys. Would you say? Would you agree that it's the finest content on the interwebulous stratosphere? Oh, it, oh, yeah, definitely up there. It's our sure. That's what we like to say. Would you also say that we had a hot docket, like a hot pocket? Because we also like to say that, too. Uh, if you need me to say that, then I will say that. Absolutely. Look, look, it's his first day. He's willing to say hot pocket and a hot docket. Hot docket for hot pocket. Or Fuck whatever. you. Look at that. <laughs> My standards are so high, Charlie. Let me tell Charlie, you. We do not have an HR. You need to be careful with what you're right. doing. There is no HR here. HR, his name is Lord Cronus. <laughs> <laughs> That what was that sound you just made? <laughs> that you you don't know a laugh? You know what a laugh sounds like? I know. Hey, Kimberly, I'm so happy that that you're not part of that Super Bowl staff chat, Kimberly, because some of the pictures that Lord Cronus puts in there, <laughs> you don't want to see. Wait, Charlie's in it though, right? Oh, Charlie is Charlie. Are you in this? Yeah, Charlie's in this because. Oh Char no! I'm so sorry. They don't look at the uh, Super Bowl staff. Don't chat. no! Don't look at it right now. Don't look no, at no. it right now. I, I've, I've been seeing some stuff go through there. I just let it pass. Yeah. Super Bowl staff chat is like the sun. You can look, but you got to look away real quick. You can burn your. <laughs> you get need the special the special eclipse glasses. Joan, you want to you want to do final thoughts? We gotta do th final thoughts. We gotta stick a fork in this one. I think. Do we? <laughs> yes. Okay. Okay. Final thoughts. My final thoughts is that uh, we need to look at how people are being treated both in the afterlife while also observing the afterlife and really consider motivations for why people want to look at uh, the spiritual realm and communicate with it. And if we're if we're being good to each other, especially young women who come from poor families, uh, in the mid eighteen hundreds. <laughs> Kimberly, what do you got? For yep. Final thought. Uh, final thought that I have. I don't know if anybody back then caught on to this, but I think it was Maggie, the one that was married. And her husband died. Maggie was the one who never officially got married. Kate was the one whose husband died and lost her two children. Leah is the one who married a uh, big, big business man. Yeah. So Maggie, uh, her not husband died and she was really upset because she didn't get to go to his funeral and get closure, but she was a medium. Yeah. 
there it is. Because what what I heard on the Wikipedia uh, when I was looking at looking up when I was doing research for this episode uh, <laughs> was that uh, she was she was in like contesting because she's like no no we really did secretly get married which she did touch on with yeah the house. I thought that was very interesting. I, I mean Honestly. like at at the time she's desolute like she women could not do anything what is like the 1970s or like late 60s as a woman could get a credit card finally an open line of credit yeah. she had nothing and he came from a rich family and she was denied education mm -hmm. uh she was exploited by her sister who then left her for dead when she married up and like it's yeah it's just a sad story but like she contested it and like call her greedy or whatever but like clearly she wasn't that greedy if she ended up homeless by the end of this <laughs> Yep. Well, and and it's really telling that she like confessed everything as well. It's like she was trying to get out of it. She yeah. was trying to have like an honest living, or you know, uh, uh, from this guy's money or something. But um, yeah. that didn't work out, and then she had to go back to it. So also started when they were fourteen and eleven. They were little babies, little babies. All they knew, <laughs> the whole life. Okay, I'll close it up. I want to thank Charlie for joining in us, joining us and not bailing out after the first 10 minutes as as we've had happen. No, it's never happened, actually. But <laughs> thanks for the last 10 minutes. We look forward to working with Charlie. We think he's a great addition. We think you're going to love him, too. And uh, yeah, we, we have a, a really wonderful future coming. We've got some really great content. So thanks for tuning in. Thanks for telling a friend. We are, again, taking applications. If you want to join our team, a little bit less active pursuing of that. However, Still, still looking for, I think, at least one more person to to work with us. So uh, thanks for tuning in. Thanks for telling a friend. Say hi to your mom. Uh, do something nice for somebody this week. And uh, yeah, uh, until then, try to keep your gun away from ghosts. We'll see you all next week. Take care of yourselves. Bye. 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 Bye.